what's up guys? It's Jared from The Mystic Guy. So in this video, I want to talk about the veteran disconnection. Um, if you're a veteran, especially a combat veteran, a lot of us are feeling um, a disconnect when we get out of the military between society, um, with even friends and, and family members. And this is a really normal uh, feeling to have, but it's important to know why you're having this feeling. And, uh, and then also some solutions to kind of start allowing you to feel more connected to life and uh, everything around you. So when I first got out of the military, I just did what most of us do and I just went to college. I really didn't know what the next move was. I really didn't know what I wanted. I was pretty emotionally burnt out from the entire experience. So I just went out, got out and I be, uh, became an English major. And that just helped me kind of explore my feelings and what was going on. And um, when I walked around campus, I noticed that I felt really different from everyone. Uh, I even felt different from a lot of the other veterans that I saw. Um, and it, you, you might be in this crowd and you might not be, but I, I saw guys with big trucks, a lot of uh, you know military stickers, and they would wear their, their cami hats with their digi packs. And I wasn't really about that. I, I didn't really uh, want to put my military identity out there anymore because I didn't really feel it was a, it was a part of life that I wanted to necessarily really remember. There was a lot of good things and a lot of bad things. I just wanted to move on. So I really just kind of dressed casual and played the part, just kept my head down, studied and did what I had to do. But I still felt this disconnection from, from everyone. So in this video, um, I'm going to share with you some of the things of what, uh, some of the things that you might be feeling, why uh, you might be feeling them, but then also offer some possible solutions. Uh, to how to move on and how to feel more connected. All right, so number one, entitlement. When you get out, you understand that everything from your chow to uh, you know your, your transportation to gas, everything that you need to survive uh, has been earned with your blood, sweat, and tears. When you're in the military, everything um, you you really work hard to get and to to receive. And a lot of the younger people, when they get out of high school, they just go to college. And you know, a lot of them coming from uh, middle, upper class families, they don't really, they've always really, they've had a lot given to them. Um, and so many of them don't really understand what it means to work for something. And you being in the military, you really understand what it means to work and give it your all. So that entitlement piece, uh, y there's definitely an attitude of a, that I sensed um, within the younger generation and with you know other people my age who hadn't been in the military felt entitled to a lot of things and I didn't really have that because I just knew that you know you just work what you get for and uh, you know a lot of us were I mean myself I was fighting for benefits from the VA uh, the entire time I was going to college um, and that was a, an, an unbelievable process in and of itself and so that entitlement piece is really a separating factor between uh, you, the veteran, and, and the people that you're around. Number two, uh, that's core values. Your core values are essentially different uh, from everyone around you. Uh, the, main, the main being, there, you have an understanding of, what it, of teamwork. You have an understanding of teamwork, of what it means to be a part of the group, and you realize that um, you have to be open and communicative and honest and always looking out for people to the left and to your right uh, behind you and in front of you and you really get that from the sense of camaraderie uh, from being in life and death situations and you know that your well-being depends upon the person to your left and their well-being depends upon you so you really have the sense of connection with all the people around you when you get out you really don't have that um, you see that everyone is kind of just doing their own thing they're going after careers, maybe starting families, and um, there's a, 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 a definite sense of individuality. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it might be re it's really, really hard when you first get out and you kind of realize you're just, you're on your own. Um, and, and in some ways you're not, but in a, a whole other sense you are that you might have never experienced before. And when I first got out, that was really, really shocking and jolting to me. And so I felt an extra sense of loneliness because I was so used to being around uh, around my boys and having everyone with me and being able to get stuff done. And so um, I can remember being on group projects and people not showing up on time and people not communicating and people not doing their work. And I was so blown back by it. I was like, you know, don't you realize that 
there's an interdependent relationship going on here. Like my well-being and my grade depends on your performance as well. We're all in this together. Well, how do how don't you get this? And I would get frustrated. And so that's really hard for a person who's never been um, in that type of environment where everyone's well-being depends on one another. Um, they don't really understand that sense of community and camaraderie yet. So that can be another reason why you might be feeling very, very uh, alone. Uh, when you're in college or just out in the regular world coming from the military. Number three, everything to you seems really, really hard. Um, and I really think if you're a combat veteran, you can really, really relate to that because many of us, if you've been in combat, you're probably burnt out. And you go into the civilian sector and, and uh, the Western world, it moves at a really, really quick pace. And you might have some, some emotional issues, some memories, some traumas that want to be integrated. It's, uh, that might want to surface to to the front of your being that you might have to deal with, and, but you're also trying to still live and keep up with the pace of the real world, pay bills, do a good job um, at your work, be with your family, but dealing with all this internal issues as well. And that can be like a lot and everyone else around you kind of seems to be moving at a pace that you feel like you just can't keep up with. So I really understand that. That's something that I struggled with. and. I don't know, I might still be struggling with, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Number four, you find that people complain a hell of a lot and you really don't understand that. When I first got out, I was so confused. I was, you know, I was pretty happy, uh, just kind of happy with a roof over my head and I was guaranteed warm food and a shower every night and after living in the field half the time that was pretty awesome so I was really shocked because I would look around and I would see everyone complaining about something just complaining about stupid stuff and after you've been in life and death situations I mean that doesn't mean that life isn't hard or that you don't understand things and that you know there's still things that don't go your way but you just kind of deal with it and you, and you deal with it in the best way you can and you move on there's no sense in really complaining about it now when you're in the military it's different you complain and bitch about everything because you know that's how you get a sense of camaraderie you commiserate with all your buddies you know for staying up super late at work for some dumb reason or you know you're getting rained at in the middle of the field and that brings you all together but then when you get out and you're just on your own you look around and people are just complaining about some really some really dumb stuff and uh, you don't really understand why and so at least in myself when I was going through that phase I kind of felt a certain level of resentment towards those people and I didn't want to feel that way but I just did but um, that's just kind of how it is and, I, and I, didn't, I didn't know why I didn't want to feel that way but it's just how I felt. Okay, so what are some solutions to help you feel more connected and maybe get uh, back into the swing of life and get into the swing of relationships and being able to connect with people again? Number one, accept and realize that you're different. You've had certain life experiences um, and that's just, it's shaped the way you view the world. So you're naturally going to view the world very, very different and you're going to be different from other people. And you can either focus on your differences from those other people or you can focus on your similarities. And depending upon which one you focus on really kind of determines how connected you feel to those other people. It's normal um, to feel the way that you do and it's normal to see these things, but it's important to emphasize your focus and what you want to focus on. Do you really want to focus how you, on how different you are from everyone and make yourself feel strange? Or do you want to focus on how similar you are to those other people as well and find commonalities so you feel closer and connected to them? Many of the people in your environment, whether you're at work or you're in school especially, um, they don't understand and they can't understand the brevity of your experiences in the military possibly or in combat especially. Um, and the, there's a certain level of ignorance, but don't mistake that ignorance for carelessness. Um, I know in myself, when I got out, I would just tell myself, oh man, these people, they just, they just don't get it. These kids, they just don't get it. They don't know what's up. But that's not, that's not a bad thing. Um, it's not that they don't care. Um, it's just that they're ignorant of your reality. Speak up with them, share your story, and you'd be surprised how much they'll actually listen and, and be receptive to what you have to say. Number two, talk to people about their stories. Ask them what happened in their lives. 
as you find that you focus less on your own story and on your own hurts and sufferings and you talk to other people and you open up, you open up your heart and you open up your mind, you'll find that everyone is fighting some type of war. Everyone's in this thing that we call life together where no one can escape trauma, no one can escape, escape suffering. Everyone is fighting their own inner and outer battles and it happens in different ways and just because we can't see it on the outside doesn't mean it's not there. I, you know, once I started really opening up and sharing some of my stories, um, other people started opening up with me, and I was amazed by uh, some of the things that I heard. You know, people are—I talk with people who are dealing with uh, rape, with incest, with murder. I, I talked with a mother who had been abandoned by her husband, and she, she was left with her kids, and she had no idea how she was going to make it. She didn't have a job, and she had health issues. You know, everyone is fighting their own type of war. And the more we just focus on our own stories and our own hurts and our own traumas, uh, the more we kind of isolate ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with focusing on those things in the sense that, you you know, they need to be healed and integrated and given the light of consciousness. But it's another thing just to use that as a means to separate yourself from everyone because everyone is fighting some type of war. We just not, We just might not always see it. So it's really important to share your story, but also then hear other people's stories. Allow them to open up, open your heart and open your mind to them and see just how similar that you really, really are. When we come together and we share our stories, that's what's going to give us the ability to heal, to heal ourselves and to heal each other. We're all in it together. <laughs> There's, there, it might take different forms, but we're all fighting something and we're all trying to figure this whole thing out. So that's all I got this time, guys. Thanks for stopping by and listening. I wish you all the best. Peace. This thing's centered. That looks cool. Oh. So the glasses. Not with the dress shirt, though.